On today's episode of Health Accelerated, when we think of being innovative in how we affect healthcare and what that means for patients, we often think about the means and the machines. But sometimes all of that requires an innovative philanthropic approach to make it happen. Joining me to discuss the importance of philanthropy on the healthcare landscape are Tom Hammerton, president of the OSF Healthcare Foundation, and John Heller, who, along with his wife Annette, established the Heller Center for Kids with Cancer at OSF Children's Hospital of Illinois. Welcome to you both. And Tom, let me start with you. You've lived the bulk of your career in fundraising. From your perspective, why is philanthropic giving so important to a community? Besides the obvious of, of the impact of those gifts, I think um, uh, one of the real important things is it creates a, a, this culture um, the culture of giving does some other things too. Makes people nicer. Um, it, it uh, you know, when you talk about giving, it's not just giving to organizations, but it's giving to each other, and that's what this world's all about. And I think the more um, philanthropy is part of our communities, it just helps families. I mean, honestly, we see that. Do you see it connecting people maybe more to the cause when they are directly involved with it that way? Oh, 100%. 100%. And John's a great example. I'm sure he'll talk about. In all of our communities, we have some incredible um, philanthropy in total. And, uh, you know, I grew up in Peoria, and so my best examples are here and observations are in Peoria. And I would say... Don Fights of Caterpillar, he was the chairman of Caterpillar back in the 90s. Um, he actually, I think, single-handedly got this culture of philanthropy going in Peoria, Illinois. Um, he did it in a different way. He basically forced you, you guys to, <laughs> to give. But, but once people started giving, they enjoyed it. And so even though that first gift might have been forced, they kept giving, and it spread all over Peoria. It's, now, Peoria would be probably one of the most philanthropic communities per capita in, in the country, quite frankly. You know, you hear people mention that all the time. Mm -hmm. And before we continue that conversation, yeah. I do want to loop John in so people aren't just going, who's this guy? <laughs> so you obviously, John, you have a background through Caterpillar. Your professional career was there. And that led you into this philanthropic mindset. Give me a little bit of basis for how that all started for you. Well, follow on with Tom, I think each of the Caterpillar chairmen that I worked for or around uh, had a pretty simple philosophy, and that is we're going to work you really hard, we're going to pay you really well, and we expect you to give back. So find something you're passionate about and make this community a better place and live on all four sides of the square in terms of your faith, your family, your church, and uh, what's going on in the community. So that got inbred, and it was, uh, as Tom said, it was – part of our personal values, and it made you feel good that you knew you were helping someone less fortunate. You know, and there's a number of charitable foundations set up through companies. Caterpillar has a foundation. OSF Healthcare has a foundation. And you see those numbers of how they grow. How have you seen it over the years? Has it changed? Has it stayed steady? What effect did the pandemic have on everything? Let's have a little discussion around that on where philanthropic giving has gone over the years. I started in um, philanthropy at Bradley University this is in 1998, so 20, this is my 25th year. And, you know, at first, not knowing what the heck it was, um, it was just to me about begging, you know, the first couple of years. I just, you know, I hated it, Hate, absolutely hated it. Yeah. Just stick it your hand out and, <laughs> and give without purpose, you know, and just because we deserve it kind of a thing. Quickly realized that's not the way to do it. And... Um, We've, we have evolved in philanthropy. Higher ed started it, I think, um, uh, whereby it's more about uh, the donor and less about the recipient. And um, that's the way you get big gifts and the most impactful gifts, and it's when it's, it's the most fun for everybody, quite frankly. And when, when that donor gives to a passion, uh, and something significant, you know, it's a stretch gift typically is what creates the greatest joy, thankfully, for us organizations. And um, uh, over time, that has changed some, but the premise is, has all been the same. I would say in general, the giving has just continued to increase over time. 
rather than go up and down. It's just kind of a pretty steady increase when you look at all of our communities. And I think that's a, a, a national, um, it also happens nationally, that would be the curve. It's more of a steady incline curve because people enjoy it. And when that spreads, uh, people tell each other, well, this is a wonderful experience. And the people who are soliciting tell others, well, that was really awesome. It's not hard to do. And um, so those build on each other and then just creates more philanthropy all over. An important change in my mind as I witness the, the foundation's work at Caterpillar and others is when those companies decided that they would match where the employee wanted to make their gift. So then the employee could see oftentimes their gift doubling or maybe tripling in size. So it became much more impactful. And then the company had the premise and the support that we will support what our employees want to support. So it became a very positive thing from an employee uh, contribution recognition attribute. And then the, the gifts grew with that. But it was like the foundation's money will follow where our employees want to give. And that was hugely impactful. Well, you almost have to because if you think about the communities that Caterpillar is involved in around the globe and then OSF Healthcare throughout the state of Illinois and up into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, every community is different. Everybody's needs are different depending on the size and scope of what's going on there. So that that is nice to have that flexibility. John, before we continue, I want people to understand what your path led you to, and the development of the Heller Center for Kids with Cancer. Give us that nutshell. I mean, we could sit here and sure. just talk all day about the Heller <laughs> Center and the wonderful things it's doing, but explain the starting point and the genesis for that and then where we are today with it. Annette and I started with uh, the premise that we wanted to make a gift while we were living uh, so that we could see the impact of it. Uh, we had uh, family discussions with our two adult children and their spouses and said, we're where do we want to make the most impact? And we decided it was going to be kids and it was going to be health care and it was going to be education. That's where we started. And uh, we had these monies available for several years and before we decided where that gift was going to be made. And I think Tom introduced a concept that I hope everybody watching this podcast uh, internalizes. And he said, we're very focused on donor intent. So what, what does the donor want to see happen? And Tom and the foundation uh, did an incredible job, along with the epiphany that Case Saving allowed us to have that said, you know, we're doing wonderful things from a clinical side with pediatric oncology, but that's really just the start. And there's a whole bunch of other services to make these kids do well, consistent with the sister's mission of mind, soul, and body. And so we just kept tweaking the uh, the foundation and the endowment until we uh, we got that right answer to help help kids with all those challenges besides just the medical treatment of pediatric oncology. In a nutshell, the Heller Center for Kids with Cancer supports the entire family, helping patients, parents, and siblings face the obstacles and trauma a cancer diagnosis creates. It provides critical non-medical support services to help children complete their education, develop coping skills, and grow into adulthood because we're helping cure cancer with kids in kids, which is a wonderful thing. And they grow on into adulthood, which is fabulous. But sometimes what they've gone through as a child is very difficult as they move forward. And so because of your gift, we have these services. And so it when you walk in and see what the center is doing, what does that do for you? Sorry, kind of puts me right back in that space. You know, the first young man that we met said we saved his life. And he, yeah. We weren't thinking we were saving kids' lives, right? But he was thinking about taking his own life. And we got the psychosocial services in front of him to let him know what a treasure he was. And that just yeah. wasn't acceptable. And then you keep kids on path with their education you keep the family unit together. The more we can do here in this community in the Children's Hospital, the better that family unit and the patient do. And it's just critical to have these services here in the Children's Hospital to make these things happen. This is what makes the 
the world turn and what makes America really great. There's no other country that actually has this kind of philanthropy, this kind of engagement um, to help others. And you can see from John's emotion, this is meaningful stuff. And it's meaningful because it's really helping a lot of people. And when you see it, and these children that, are, that have been suffering, and then you add these services and the change and the impact that that may, that's that's all a donor needs to see, and that's why they do it. It's truly a beautiful thing, and actually, the gift giving in and of itself uh, can be a very spiritual thing. And I, we witnessed that with uh, John and Annette. And it's a it's a spiritual um, act. Uh, it really is, and there's tons of emotion with it, and it's pure joy. You know, we talk all the time. We have a cancer institute. The OSF Cancer Institute will be opening uh, early 2024. It's very exciting. Yeah. There's a fundraising component to make that happen. The Children's Hospital of Illinois building that opened in 2010, huge fundraising component. We talk about the impact that these have on health care as a whole, the philanthropic component. Would those two facilities be there without the philanthropic and community support to make them happen? No, well, absolutely not. And you knew that answer. <laughs> I'll throw another one in, and that's our jump center. You know, jump was one gift that uh, made right. that happen. Um, and each one of uh, the facilities that you're in programs, it's not just the buildings, you know. it's uh, uh, The buildings create the commitment to um, invest in everything that's required for mm -hmm. those for those programs, whether it's Children's Hospital, Almost Home Kids, Jump, and our innovative platform, the, the amount of investment now that OSF has, has placed in those. A Cancer Institute will be zero, uh, no different. Um, yes, that building costs $250 million. The community is going to be giving $100 million of that. It's really the community's building, and it's going to be the community's program. There's going to be another $200 million invested in people and research. Uh, we are we're going to be the best in the country. I, I just, we, we know that. And uh, that's what philanthropy does. Children's Hospital is going to be the best in the country as well with gifts and programs like John and Annette have created. And it just creates this excitement. People want to be a part of winners. And uh, philanthropy allows for the path uh, to win. And people just like to win. And winning means you're helping a lot of people. In fundraising and philanthropy, oftentimes you hear the three T's, time, treasure, and talent. Obviously, the treasure is wonderful to be able to support that way, but some people can't. It's just not a thing. Um, but volunteers are a huge yes. part of the philanthropy landscape, aren't they? Correct. Yeah, 100%. I mean, John and Annette do all, all three of those in a monster way. Uh, they're heavily engaged with the Heller Center. But they also have engaged others who don't have, you know, the, that type of treasure to be able. They would if they could, but they just don't at this point in their life. And so, um, actually, John and Ed are great at, at pulling the, the volunteerism out of people. And we've got some great committees who are are working on all this stuff. And and we have committees all over the place, and we need them in order for this place to to thrive. Uh, when I say this place, OSF Healthcare in general. Yeah, John, from your perspective, when you look at it, again, the conversations that take place on your end of things, you're passionate about this. Talk about how that plays into getting people involved. The, for those who may not have the resources and want to be involved, because everybody wants to be involved. You're right. You hear it all their time. They're like, how can I help? I can't do X, Y, and Z, but what can I do? What are those conversations like? They're uh, incredibly enriching and fulfilling when you see that you've touched someone else that wants to join the team to make that happen. I, I think human nature is people want to be part of a team. People want to be part of something bigger than themselves. So any contribution that they're making, small or large, if they feel that they can align to a bigger goal, makes them feel really, really good. And I think that's one of the most important attributes of philanthropy is if you can cascade that, get that started with the next generation. You know, we involved our children in the, the gift, saying this is your money that's going somewhere else feel good about that because we're going to we're going to teach everybody how to do it and you you watch your grandchildren do it uh, it's incredible uh, 
you know, we were part of the, the NICU development as well. And when you have a friend, a work associate, a stranger say, my grandchild was in your neighborhood in the NICU. And so it just, it builds on itself with each one of those, then you know you're doing the right thing. And, they're, you know, and, and that always says that, you know, we've been blessed and you need to share your blessings. And so that's, but that may be time, that may be talent, maybe some other way. Uh, you just have to tell them the one story that they can relate to. Tell them about the child that wanted to take their life. Tell them about the child that no longer knew how to drink from a water fountain. Tell them about the child that has gait issues and can't walk. Tell them about the child that had cancer treatment 20 years ago, and they actually have their after-completion therapy handbook so that they can go back and say, hey, my fertility doctor, I, ha I was on these protocols when I was fighting pediatric oncology. And when you know you're enabling something for the future, uh, it's rewarding beyond belief. I know one of the other areas that we've been exploring is this whole thing with cryptocurrency. Yeah, um, It's interesting. It's fascinating. I don't totally understand all of it. Yeah. I'll openly admit that. But it's kind of an interesting, exciting new opportunity for fundraising, isn't it? Well, it, it is. And hopefully the bugs, you know, there's bugs that hopefully uh, they'll get out. But um, inherently, those that have... Um, and use cryptocurrency and buy things with cryptocurrency. They like to donate uh, with cryptocurrency. So, you know, we've just just now have had that capability to receive uh, funds and and you know, whatever someone wants to give an asset, we want to be able to take it. So, um, it was kind of a no brainer for us to be able to set it up where we can accept crypt cryptocurrency. And you know, we have. We have quite a few donors who believe that, uh, you know, the cryptocurrency world will do nothing but grow over time. Uh, we're prepared if it does. That's a good problem to have, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. As we wrap this up, what final thoughts do you want to leave people with in regards to philanthropic giving, the healthcare landscape, and how the two – can collaborate and innovate together for a broad number of possibilities down the road. John, I'll start with you. One of the most rewarding things for Annette and myself was as we worked toward making this gift. Um, many times the, the treasures that are available come from the business world in one shape or another, right? That's where a lot of the money gets made in the way capitalism works. Um, the foundation was very willing to work with another simple concept of outcome-based services that says if, if I'm going to make this gift, I want to know this gift is being put to use in a very significant, impactful way. And when you work with an organization like the Children's Hospital, the foundation, that says, no, we're very willing to measure because I grew up in an environment, what gets measured gets done. So if you want things to get done, you measure them. And healthcare is no different, right? And some of the outcomes are pretty easy to measure. Some are a little more challenging. But that made our commitment and our uh, ability to go out and further socialize the need because we could commit, look, we're measuring this stuff. We, we can demonstrate what we're doing. And you know that your money has been put to, to good work and good use and children are benefiting from that. And so it's just another component of philanthropy that says, let's, let's measure what we're doing so that we know that we're being good stewards. Because that's another one of the key elements of philanthropy is, right, being good stewards of whatever resources we have. One thing I learned a long time ago um, was that there's only one thing that makes people happy after they have reached a certain level of um, – um, wealth, and that is by giving it away. And that's a true researched um, statement. I'll take it one step further. I think the happiness that philanthropy and giving for not just the, the recipients, but the donors and everyone else that is the, and the beneficiaries, they all become a team, and they all equally um, express joy 
um, with that. And, and, and John used the word team and how most people enjoy being on a team. Well, that, that team is pretty special, right? That team is doing some incredible things. And the OSF system um, is really about the mission, and it just fits right along with the, the mission. And I've enjoyed it for 15 years, and I hope I have a few more. Maybe one other last thought for me. <laughs> this may not be exactly right, Sister Judith Ann, so I apologize if I don't mm. get this. But <laughs> what I recall her telling me and Annette was you don't know what your treasures are until you give them away. It's a good statement. And another way of saying what, you know, Tom says, yep. where the joy comes from. Yeah. Well, and on that, nothing more to say. John Heller, Tom Hammerton, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Shelley. Thanks.